I was 11 years old when I was sexually abused by a martial arts teacher. This was a guy that I idolised. I was in a martial arts class. I would say I was the star of the class. I was the teacher's pet. Um, and I idolised this guy. I was 11, but I was young for 11. And I just feel this deep, deep depression at the age of 11, this, uh, this awful fear, this awful terror. Not really even just about what's happened. And not even just about the, the betrayal, but the fact that I know I can't go and tell my mum. I know I can't do that. I can't tell my dad. And then when I eventually did tell somebody, later on when I was a bit braver, the second betrayal came in, which was, did you enjoy it? Um, and uh, did you lead him on? Did you lead him on? I suffered from lots of depressions. I suffered from um, psychotic jealousy, which went on right into my adulthood, right into my 40s. Didn't trust anybody. Nobody could be trusted, especially the people you love. I can remember in my first marriage that if my wife left the room, if she left the room without me, I felt that she would be betraying me. I didn't trust anybody. I didn't trust myself. After one very bad depression, uh, I just thought I can't live like this anymore. This depression used to sweep in, take over my life and debilitate me for three months at a time. And it was, I've never ever felt so afraid and so alone. And one day I just thought I'm not having this anymore. I'm not having it. I'm not going to live my life like this. I decided that I was going to confront everything I was afraid of. I became a nightclub doorman. I thought I had a fear of violence, I had a fear of people controlling me. So I became a nightclub doorman and then for 10 years I lived a hideously violent life. So at the age of 28, um, this abuse was still displacing itself. It was displacing itself now in violence and I was hideously violent. I didn't like the fact that I looked like a little girl, so I got rid of all the prettiness. I got a broken nose, I got cauliflower ears. Um, I became a world-class martial artist. My life became about teaching people how to defend themselves. It was only when I got to the level where I was like, I don't know, I was a fifth dan or something, and I was starting to really ascend the grades, and I kept thinking, why am I a fifth dan in martial arts? I'm on the world stage and I'm still scared, and I still don't trust myself, and I still don't know who I am. So I started to delve deeper, and I started to write, and I felt that the writing enabled me to draw out all of these old shadows and these divides and put them on paper. And I recognised that the writing started to become a form of exorcism. Uh, and I started to study psychology and I started to write about all the things that happened to me, but with brutal honesty. With on with the, the honesty was so strong that we put a play on about the abuse called Fragile um, and the theatre insisted on having the Samaritans at the door on every single night. This teacher has implanted a belief in my mind, a story, that no one can be trusted. Not even the people you love, especially the people you love. That became my belief, that became my truth. When I recognised that it was a story um, and that it was determining my whole reality, I took a hammer to the story and I killed the story. And then I created a new story. Um, part of me doing that was exercising this man from my psyche and my way of exercising was to forgive him. I guess I was at my the height of my physical prowess when I was sat in a cafe in Coventry. I was 16 stone, I was fifth down, I was schooled in lots of different martial arts, I'd been in hundreds of fights, I'd witnessed thousands of violent confrontations, I was a knockout merchant, I was in all the martial arts magazines, all the tough man magazines and I sat in a cafe one one uh, Sunday morning, I think it was a Sunday morning, I looked across and there he was, this teacher. Hadn't seen him since I was a kid and he filled the room. And the moment I saw him, I was 11 again. All of my grades, all of my dance, all of my muscles, all of my ability to kill with a single punch, <laughs> it just fell away. I was 11 and I was trembling. I had adrenaline from my toes to my scalp. And I realised that even with all of these layers, even with all this protection, this guy was still in me. So I walked over to him um, and he was sat down. And I was trembling and I was nearly crying. I was really, really emotional. 
and I was, I was, I could have tipped either way. I, I would have either burst out crying or it would have been hideously violent. And I just said to him, you don't remember me. I said, but when I was a boy, you sexually abused me. And he went to stand up and I put my hand out and I said, sit down. And he hesitated and I said, sit down. I, I, he must have felt the intention in my voice because he sat straight back down again. And I said to him, you abused me when I was a boy. I said, you fucked me. You fucked my life. You need to know that I forgive you. I forgive you. And I said it twice, but I didn't say it twice for him. I said it twice for me. I needed to confirm it. I needed to be sure. I needed to know that this was going to destroy him. And this is, um, this is the bit I always find really emotional. And I always wondered, every time I come to this part of the story, I always, get, I always feel really emotional. And then I feel embarrassed about being emotional. And then I feel a lot of shame rise up. And then, because I'm thinking I'm 56, I should have got hold of this now. And this is when I recognise that the emotion I'm feeling isn't fear. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. The emotion I'm feeling is because of that moment when I, when I said I forgive him, he stood up. As I went to walk away, he stood up and he put his hand out like that and his fingers were trembling and he wanted, me to, he wanted me to shake his hand. And I knew what he was saying, I knew exactly what he was saying. He's saying, are you forgiving me? Or are you forgiving me? And I knew that if I could shake his hand, if I could embrace him, I could completely dissolve him from my psyche. And I shook his hand and I walked away and I was free. We have the power to change our story. It isn't just like, you know, I'm gonna make up a new story. It's like we change cognitions, we change perceptions. Our reality is based on stories. Our reality is built on stories. And if you can find a higher social platform within yourself by being congruent, by trusting yourself, you can actually dictate reality. But first you have to kill all the old stories. And you kill all the old stories by forgiving or giving over or exiling or exercising the people that abused you. I refuse to hate anybody. I refuse to be angry with anybody. I refuse to hold a grudge against anybody because if I do, those people possess me. And that's what I learned from the person that abused me. And my life is as it is uh, because of that, not despite it. <laughs>